PowerPoint. Today, we will be talking about troubleshooting alerts with WeatherTrack Mobile. Um, <clears throat> and we have Brad Stopcotti from the Garden City School District. Um, Brad, thanks for joining us. It's a great pleasure oh. to see you on the call. Thanks for having me. Um, and we have decided to take on the topic of um, the troubleshooting tools available through the app. So a lot of what Brad does out in the field um, is oversee his techs and help them um, just maintain the, the portfolio of controllers that Garden City USD um, maintains. So we will jump right into demonstration, but first we wanna set the scene, right? We wanna go here, go back to your face. Um, let's start talking about troubleshooting. And in our conversation, you told me what your first step is, and it's not weather track mobile. So I want to cover that first because it's a very important water management lesson. So can you talk to me about your process? Okay. Well, uh, usually every morning I can get my reports, get on weather track central, see if I have anything that's going to surprise me from the day before. Um, if I have alerts, I'll kind of look at them. I'll kind of start diagnosing what could be causing it. And then I can let my techs know in the morning before they head out and they can start working on the problem. So, and I love that. I want all the water managers to hear that step, right? That central visibility, that um, weather track central in the morning is a great use of that access point, right? Because weather track. Central does such a great job at collecting all of the data and putting it all in a very user-friendly format that makes it easy for a manager like Brad to log in and see all of the different alerts, all of the different places that his techs need to go and be paying attention on a day's work, all the different systems that are asking for an irrigation tech to come put hands on it. Uh, you can see at WeatherTrack Central. And so many of my great users in Brad's structure, school districts, cities, um, large corporate campuses that have teams of irrigation folks will have exactly that first meeting where you gather around the computer and just get the marching orders for the day. And uh, I think that that is a great example of how to use the WeatherTrack technology. Um, what I want to get into, though, is how we actually use the mobile when we're on site, right? So um, separate of what we see at WeatherTrack Central, where you, again, can pull reports and see all that stuff. You can also sign up for text and email notifications. Um, once you have dispatched the guys out to the field and they are actually doing the on-site troubleshooting, uh, that's when really the weather track mobile application would come into play. Okay, and so give me two seconds. Let's see how I can share my screen here and we will just do a demo of the weather track mobile app. Brad, are you seeing the weather track mobile app on my screen? I got you, yep. Okay, so when I do this full screen thing, I can't see the chat box. So uh, if you see somebody chat at me, let me know. All right, so the demonstration of the troubleshooting or alert troubleshooting tools at WeatherTrack Mobile. Uh, start by logging in to WeatherTrack Mobile 3.0. Uh, the versions one and two will not have this same feature set. So make sure that you are logged in to the most current version. And we are... Ooh, going to use the demo account because you don't need to see all 3,000 controllers in my account. So we log in with your username and password. And alert management is really something that we focus a lot on. Um, the alerts really are the day-to-day -day management of um, weather tracks, right? Because once you've dialed in your weather settings, um, the alerts are really kind of the what keep you on site. And so through this site walk tool or WeatherTrack mobile, 
we really focused on alert management. And you can start to see that right at the very first screen. When you log in, you'll see this sites screen and you can log into a single site and look at the overview page for that site. Let's look at my yard, for example. And here on the overview screen, this is the site overview where you'll have a site picture and you can see my snowy little house there. You can see the weather predictions. And then if you scroll down, you see a summary of all of the alerts that you have on site, both controller status and controller alerts. And this is all of your controllers on a site tied together. So this is, I mean, it, alert management really starts at the very, very beginning. Um, the, you can actually see on each site how many alerts summarized uh, site by site right here on the sites page. So you can see um, some very high, high level alert information right here on your sites page. And then as you start to drill down, a great example of that, this four controller site down here has six red alerts and one gray alert. Um, the red alerts are the ones that can immediately affect the health of your landscape. And so on this site page, you can look at it as an overview, or if you drill in, you can see I've got four controllers out on this site. And again, you'll see the separation of the red alerts and the gray alerts. Brad, yep. I have to put you on the spot here. Okay. Um, do you, what do you do about gray alerts? Do you do anything about those? Uh, I know that the ones that are in red are the most important ones. Those are ones that are just begging for attention. Right. One of the most common questions is, what about these non-critical alerts? How do you manage those? Is that something you leave to your techs or you do for yourself? That's uh, mainly one that I'll manage myself. Um, like right now, a lot of my gray ones are just climate control uh, rain pauses. Um, this is what I currently have on mine, trying to look to see Oh. Yeah, so it's really anything that's not a, a system alert, right? It's not a major or critical alert. Um, but those are one of the key things about understanding alert management is understanding that some of these alerts are designed to run to, right? Some of these alerts are, are stop what you're doing and go out to the site and look. And we try right. and do our best to differentiate that from even the highest levels. Um, which ones really are commanding your attention and which ones are just something that you might need to look at, right? Something that might affect the way that you manage. So we see those in water window alerts, water day alerts, controller status alerts, those kinds of things. Um, <clears throat> so when you're managing that, that is something that you don't ask your guys to run out to the site, right? No, nope, not generally, no. So at what point do you what point do you trigger a site roll or a truck roll to those sites? Uh, station high flows, station low flows, valve no connects, um, things of that matter, yeah. So it really goes beyond that first level, that first sift, and you really need to get down to the specific alert information to decide which way you're sending your guys. Correct. Okay, so let's look at that real fast. Let's drill into that. So uh, I'm gonna not use this OptiFlow site because it's all full of craziness. Um, <laughs> let's, let's move to a single controller site. The Meadowview HOA is my old standby. I use this for everything. Um, and if I advance from the sites page to the controllers page, you'll notice that I just have all of the controllers listed. In this case, it's a one controller site. Again, if we're talking about alert notification, we see some good alert information, the controller status icon, which tells you if the controller is off or on or manually irrigating. Um, so at a, at a glance, you can tell kind of what the controller is doing right now. And then again, your red or major and critical alerts and your gray or minor alerts. 
Now to drill down to get to where Brad needs, we click on this button here, this settings page and go to the controller level commands where we see all of the alert information, right? We've got these five tabs, different utilities on the controller page, but we default right to the alerts page. This is where you start to drill in, right? This is where you see your guys in action. Correct. Okay. So tell me what it is that you look for on this page that is a differentiator. <clears throat> well, pretty much my priority is anything that's red. I want to figure out. Now, if I look and see, you know, the station high depletion uh, for three months, that's probably in my eyes uh, a problem where if I have high flow alert that keeps kicking it off or no flow, well, that site isn't going to get watered every night. So if we fix one of the first two problems on there, it should clear off my high depletion. Absolutely. And we have tools on uh, WeatherTrack Central that you can independently manage depletions for every station. So especially at this time of year when you're coming out of winterization, um, if you left your controllers in uh, off, they've been accumulating depletion. So this station high depletion might be on a lot of your controllers. Um, and so this leads me to kind of that next step in troubleshooting. So as a weather track amateur, um, when you're first logging in and you're first getting to know the weather track system, this is where people get lost, 100%. Uh, the most common call to customer service is, I have this alert, can you tell me what it means? <laughs> and so, uh, let's take that station high depletion as an example, right? So if I log in here and I'm out in the field doing troubleshooting and I see this station high depletion alert and I'm like, I, I have no clue. Uh, all we have to do with WeatherTrack, we built in the training tools to help you understand this. So if you just click on that alert, it will take you right to a screen that first of all gives you a description of that alert. And the description is unique to your controller or your site. So it tells you exactly what stations uh, are affected and kind of where you need to, to run to trouble, right? And then after that description, which is specific for your controller, we have some general information about this alert. The severity, um, kind of how important is it? How closely do we need to monitor and run to this problem? Definition and possible causes. This is where we get to the good stuff, right? What is this alert actually trying to tell me? Um, controller action. What has the controller done in response to this alert? With WeatherTrack, each alert has its own unique response. That's important because uh, some early users think that any alert shuts everything down, right? That's not the case. We actually, every condition that we detect um, has a unique response built in to try and keep the system uh, from wasting water and causing landscape damage, but at the same time, keep systems that can run running. Uh, keep those stations that aren't broken on the irrigation plan and keep everything green. So understanding what the controller has done in response to those alerts is a key factor in managing the alerts out in the field. And then possible remedies, places to start looking for a solution, uh, places to point your irrigation tech to, right? And then if you get to the bottom of this and you still uh, don't understand or you want more information, up at the top of the page, we've got this click here to see how to resolve this alert. That will take you to that next level. Um, that is a link to our knowledge base article about this particular alert. Um, so you'll see it pulls up the station high depletion knowledge base article, where embedded in that article is a video about this particular alert. I made each alert, I made a, a video for each individual alert designed to be two minutes. Uh, not always two minutes, sometimes they're longer. I know station high depletion takes me longer than two minutes to, to get through. But in this video, I address what the alert is, what it means, 
and what I as an irrigation tech would do to start to resolve this alert. In this case, if you watch this video, you'll see how to reset those depletions on weathertrack.net. Brad, that brings me back to you. Do you use this information with your guys? I've started to. Um, a lot of my guys don't have WeatherTrack mobile because I have kind of a smaller crew. Um, a lot of my time is spent actually out in the field. Uh, I do have a few guys that can do it, but I'm going to start training them. And yeah, that's something that they will definitely use. Yeah. Uh I think it just keeps guys rolling forward, right? That's the whole idea is to give the guys all of the information, all of the tools that they need to see an issue, drill down on it, not have to call you, not have to call us, just to understand what the controller is telling them. And, and I think that these tools really make a big difference in um, keeping those guys operating efficiently and understanding the feedback. Right. And one thing that I've, I, I find a benefit of it is you don't have to be an irrigation expert to fix some of these. Like you said, your steps, you're looking where to look, how to fix it is they're pretty spot on. So, yeah. And uh, I'll, to your point, a lot of this stuff, especially those gray alerts, um, don't need to be managed by an irrigation tech, right? A lot of times what the kind of the cloud is telling us the the minor alerts are just issues with the schedule or or minor things that absolutely you don't have to be the the guy with mud on his shoes to fix um so i think that that's a, a great way to keep everybody on the same page and moving forward all right so that is i think one of the big alert management tools um is just visibility into that good clean, clear information about each individual alert. Let's go back to this. Um, one of the other things that plagues people, one of the other things that we have to, to be paying attention to is if you have an alert on a station, you won't be able to run that station manually. So if I go over here to the manual irrigation function or the stations page on WeatherTrack Mobile, you can see here that station one has a flow alert on it. And because we have a flow alert on it, we don't even have the button that will allow for manual irrigation. So even if I wanted to run this station, I couldn't because this alert is affecting this station and won't let it run. So if I go out to the site and I and working through the process, right? I've used this information to drill down um, and figure out what's going on. Maybe I've got a no flow. Yes, no flow is station one. So no flow basically means kind of the amount uh, or I tried to prompt irrigation on a station and I got nothing out. Um, if I go out to the site and I, find that the water has been turned off. <laughs> That's a good reason for a no flow. So I turn that water back on, but I wanna test my repair. I can't, right? Because this alert is sitting there saying, you can't turn the water on. You can't test your repair um, because of this alert. So a critical part of the troubleshooting tools is to know how to clear these alerts. So I go back to my alerts page. And you see here on the alerts page that we have at the bottom, clear flow, clear electrical, and clear both. So if I clear those flow alerts, if I hit the, if I've found the problem, right? I turn the water back on, I wanna test my repair. I need to clear the alerts. And when I hit that clear alerts button, any of the buttons, you'll get this message saying, hey, this." is a process. This may take a few minutes. The response and clearing alerts isn't the same um, as we would expect out of like mobile or manual function. Turn stations on and off as fast. This is a whole test that has to be sent to the controller, executed, and then um, sent back. So it does take a few minutes. But if I hit OK here, it will process. Um, and you'll see that 
these when these alerts are resolved, they'll disappear from your mobile app. Boom. Just like that. And that gives us the ability to go in and test those stations, run those stations manually only after they have been cleared. So we can test the repairs that we have just made. Brad, are you using these uh, field tools? Are you using those clear buttons on WeatherTrack Mobile? Absolutely, yeah. If, uh, for instance, if I, I know I have a broken head, um, go out, put the head back on, clear the alert, I can stand right there and just, as soon as it's cleared, just fire back up and see. Yeah, and that's uh, another great point, right? Clearing it from your pocket is one thing, but then being able to test it, being able to use the manual function is such a critical part of many of the repairs. Flushing out lines, flushing out heads, just, hey, I need five seconds on this, this valve just to get all the rocks out. Um, after you've cleared the alert, those manual functions kick in and, and give you all of those tools. Um, you were telling me how you used this when you were out doing your two-wire troubleshooting. Can you tell me a little about that? Uh, yeah. So um, when I first put on the system, I had to retrofit all new um, decoders. And as I said before, with your connections being important, uh, I would get an alert for valve no connect and it'd be 10 valves. So you can get on there and look at your alerts and see, and like I said before, if you have a map, you can go and look, okay, well, this is the first valve that's in that sequence. So that you know to start looking there. Once you make that repair, you hit clear alerts, it'll resend its test through and you'll know if you have the connection correct or not. Yeah, that is a super time saver, right? Is just having that the ability to test that to our path because every connection is so important. Just the, the idea of having to walk back and forth to the controller every time um, to clear those alerts, to retest repairs, especially when you're chasing a two wire connection um, can be a huge time saver, can save you just hours and hours of, of walking back and forth from valve box to controller and back to the valve box. <laughs> I have a, oh, go ahead. Oh, absolutely. I was saying, absolutely. I would have, I would have worn the tires off of our gator if I would have had to keep going back to the controller. So yeah. And, and when we talk about the efficiency tools, right, when we talk about time savings and, and how to use WeatherTrack mobile to troubleshoot time savings is the biggest part of that conversation. I have a great question from Jerry Parsons, who says, if you have uh, low flow with OptiFlow controllers, how do you troubleshoot what may be multiple stations? Um, and Jerry, I've got a good answer for you. The, let me show you how I would do that. So let me go back to my screen. With OptiFlow controllers, first I need to go find myself an OptiFlow controller because what we're about to talk about is exclusively available on OptiFlow controllers. So I go to my Red Rock HOA and um, <clears throat> then I choose the station that I want, or the I go to the manual function and um, it defaults to this single station behavior that you have on all of our controllers. But with OptiFlow controllers, if you go to multiple, you can either run one station at a time, or you can do what we call overlap stations or run multiple stations at once. So if I was getting a low flow alert for an OptiFlow controller, first of all, the alert tells me exactly what stations were running when that alert was detected. And just so you know, the low flow is a no response alert. It doesn't interrupt irrigation at all. It keeps irrigating in spite of that alert, because it doesn't think that we're wasting water. But um, if you want to test and see what the system is doing when all those stations are on, you come to your manual multiple page and down at the bottom of the page, switch from uh, this icon, which says I'm going to run the first station manually, and then I'm going to move to the next one and move to the one after that. This icon down here, if I switch that, 
This will allow an OptiFlow controller to run multiple stations at the same time. We call that multi, multi manual. So if I go here and I say, I got an alert that says I was running stations one through five and I got a low flow alert. What I would do is I would come to multiple. I would select the alerts that are the stations that appear in the alert report. And then I hit next and it says, all right, these are the stations that you want. I hit start all and we will start manual irrigation on as many as nine stations at a time, right? We would be able to duplicate what you're seeing in the field, turn on all of the stations that uh, were running when that alert was raised, and then go to the controller and you'll see the, on the controller panel, the real time flow reading for all of these stations. Um, and so you can compare that flow reading to the one that was measured in your alert report and really um, start to drill down there, start to figure out where the differences are and, and why you're seeing those issues. <clears throat> Brad, anything to build on that for Jerry? No, I just learned something. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> those OptiFlow controllers are handy. They've got a lot of hidden away little gems that, that make managing those bigger sites very efficient. All right. Um, so we've talked about alert management, seeing alerts, accessing alerts, clearing alerts, uh, and testing alerts, which is kind of the, the gambit. It's kind of what we wanted to, we set out today to, to talk about. Do um, you have anything to build on, Brad? Any other stories you want to share with the crowd? Um, well, I just want to say another useful tool with the manual. Um, I know it's not for the alerts, but just being able to be out on site in that zoned area and be able to walk right to a head start stop is is amazing i mean just the time it saves the effort just it's there um and it, it really does help troubleshoot like if you know not necessarily with an electrical alert or a flow alert but you can also check out you know if a head's not turning properly or whatever it may be so yeah, that, that manual function from your pocket is powerful, right? Not to be over, overlooked is just the ability to do our job without technically ever going to the controller. Like oftentimes uh, I have all of the tools in my pocket uh, that I need to go on site and troubleshoot issues without ever going and unlocking the box on the wall. Do you find the same thing? Yeah, most generally, yeah, I don't hardly ever visit a controller on a site so yeah and that's something i mean that's a huge paradigm shift right that's a huge change in the way that we do things um is just kind of streamlining the process walking up to the problem turning on the the valve that we're looking at um without ever really having to go through the process of opening that controller up and dusting out the cobwebs, fighting the bees that come out of those controllers. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, all right. Well, then that kind of brings us full circle. Um, Brad, I want to finish out by uh, asking you what I ask all of my first time guests uh, who always get the question, what does WeatherTrack save you? Time. Um, I got a pretty large school district, 18 buildings, like I said, we got 7,500 students. Um, just being able to manage 81 acres of irrigated turf, it's, it's amazing to be able to have the power, the knowledge, the, the, like you said, look at the clarity of everything um, and be able to get it done quickly and in a fashionable manner. So it's a time saver with a small crew. So. That's awesome. And uh, a very popular answer, one that I, I must walk people into because <laughs> that is awesome perspective and really what we want to capture, right? That is what the show is about and what the technology is about. Hopefully we are helping our users save time at every turn. All right, Brad, well, um, let me go back. I have a, a, a plug for next week and then we, oh, let me stop this. 
still running the uh, old multi-manual test on these controllers. All right, so if you have questions, we are always here to help, right? We've got the support services, six day a week bilingual customer support at our customer support team. We've got online training resources, free on-demand certified training available at hydropoint.learnupon.com. Um, so lots of ways for you to learn more about WeatherTrack and get the help that you need. Um, please reach out if there's something that we can do to help. And next week, I'm excited to have an old friend of mine, an old friend of the show, Joe Jackson from Sprinkler Supply in Utah was one of our first guests and will return next week to talk about what makes a good water manager. He sees that the role of water manager is an emerging one in the landscape field. And we want to talk about kind of what he sees uh, those good water managers doing to make a difference in their organizations. So excited to have that um, and excited to see Joe next week. All right. And with that, um, I will thank you all for being here this week and tuning in. Brad, you have anything for everyone before we sign off? Well, if you're in Garden City, Kansas, we got a new pool opening. Um, they took out our big pool, which was at one time the world's largest hand dug pool. And they have a new water park, new slides, everything's going in. It's opening in 18 days, so. Well, next time I'm in Garden City, Kansas, I'm bringing my swimming suit. There Thanks, you Brad. go. Thank you.